again with the CNS system. We will have a series of lectures starting from today about bacterial meningitis. And also we will have one session, a group discussion during this uh, module and one microbiology lab according to the timetable provided to you. So starting today with the bacterial meningitis, it will be two lectures about bacterial meningitis. We will have uh, one today and tomorrow we will have the second one. The learning objectives to study these five microorganisms, Neisseria meningitis, group B streptococci, streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus and influenzae, and Listeria monocytogenes. These microorganisms has been tackled with other systems here and there. But today we will talk about meningitis. These microorganisms as causes of meningitis. So we are going to describe the morphology, cultural characteristics, pathogenesis, laboratory diagnosis, treatment, and the prevention. Starting with Neisseria meningitis, which is the official name. Previously, and still until now, for simplicity, they call it meningococci or meningococcus, Neisseria meningitis. These are, like other Neisseria, gram-negative diplococci, that is present in pairs. Look to them in pairs. With opposite surfaces flattened towards each other. That is to say, they are like kidney or bean shaped. They have the fasolia or shakl al kila. And they are face to face longitudinally. Look at them longitudinally. That is to say, not end to end like in Streptococcus pneumoniae. They are longitudinally facing each other in kidney bean shaped. So remember, gram negative diplococci. These are non motile, non spore forming, non acid fast. And they have capsule. Neisseria meningitis is different from Neisseria gonorrhea. We will come to Neisseria gonorrhea with the UGS. Neisseria gonorrhea is non-capsulated. Neisseria meningitis, meningococci, are capsulated. They have polysaccharide capsule. And we can do serotyping of this capsule. We have 13 serotypes, A, B, C, W, 1, 3, 5, Y, etc. 13 serotypes. Why we are giving you these serotypes? because we are going to use some of them uh, for a preparation of vaccines. The growth of this microorganism is aerobic microorganism. They require CO2, an enriched medium. Enriched medium because uh, uh, they, are, uh, they are fastidious microorganism. They require enriched media like blood agar, or chocolate agar, etc. So aerobic requires CO2, five to 10% of CO2 and enriched media because they are fastidious microorganisms. They have pili, outer membrane protein, OAM, OMP, outer membrane protein, OMP, and uh, lipo, lipo oligosaccharide los and why we are giving you these materials we are not interested as doctors with these materials but these are very important part of the pathogenesis of the microorganism and we will see how these are important omp and los lipo oligosaccharide you can see Neisseria here we cannot differentiate between Neisseria gonorrhea and Neisseria meningitis in the gram stain, of course. They appear gram negative, diplococci, kidney shape, 
and uh, one again is the other. So look here, the slide uh, is known, uh, taken from a known case of Neisseria gonorrhea, uh, and the microorganism is called Neisseria gonorrhea, gonorrhea, and sometimes called gonococcus for simplicity. These are uh, bean shape, negative, of course, you can intracellularly here inside polymorphic nuclear cell, blood cell, okay, which is a present in the pus and the purulent discharge of the patient. Morphology of Neisseria meningitis and other Neisseria are identical, similar, okay, and uh, we can come here to say that Neisseria meningitis as capsule, which is polysaccharide, 13 zero groups, and the transmission uh, for the Neisseria meningitis is through inhalation of respiratory droplets and can cause many diseases, including meningitis, look to meningitis and septic shock. Very dangerous microorganism, this Neisseria meningitis. So meningococci are usually quite members of the nasopharyngeal flora. In some people, not all, some people are carriers for meningococci and they have antibodies, protective antibodies in their blood against this microorganism. And sometimes this uh, quite innocent uh, microorganism may become quite aggressive and produce fulminating, very dangerous microorganism goes to the blood and reach to the CNS and causing meningitis, for example. And this occurs, unfortunately, without warning. That is to say, it can spread to the blood from local side and uh, cause very serious disease. For example, can cause meningitis, which is acute, purulent. What's the meaning of purulent meningitis? It means that there are pus cells in the CSF with seizures and mental signs secondary to inflammation of the meninges. What is meningitis? Is inflammation of the meninges, you know. And there will be an increase in the intracranial pressure. So remember two things, inflammation and increase in the intracranial pressure. Nicidia meningitis can cause rash and purpura and the thrombocytopenia. That is why when you see a patient with fever and headache and uh, he is unwell, very unwell, you should think about Neisseria meningitis. Very dangerous condition. And uh, this manifestation of a presence of rash and purpura is associated with endotoxemia. Endotoxemia can progress in causing infection from within one day only. The patient in this morning is okay. Tomorrow morning may be dead. It's very dangerous and very communicable. It can be transmitted quite easily, especially among the family members, school, and even national outbreaks in countries, one person to the other. So one should be very careful in dealing with this microorganism. The epidemiology, as we said, there are 10% of people who are carriers for this microorganism. They spread by respiratory droplets person to person. We said there are 13 serotypes. Group A can cause widespread epidemic, especially in uh, tropical and subtropical areas where temperature is high. 
as I said, uh, this rash is very dangerous. If you look to this rash and patient have got the manifestation of meningitis is very dangerous. It indicates to you that this could be Neisseria meningitis infection. That is why one fear from this disease because mortality rate is high. Pathogenesis from the carriers, the microorganism spread. The carriers have got, as I said, a protective antibodies in their blood. Once the microorganisms start infection from local area, they can cause bacteremia, endotoxemia, and meningitis. Pili and outer membrane protein that I have spoken about it, making the microorganism be able to attach to non-ciliated nasopharyngeal cells and form microcolonies to the microvilli. These cells, the nasopharyngeal cells, have got microvilli. So microcolonies attach to these cells and then enter inside the cells as vesicles and go to the submucosa. Because they are capsulated, they can resist phagocytosis and enter into the blood stream. They can take iron from the transferrin and resist phagocytosis and also resist complement by their capsule. Because they are capsulated, they are more resistant to the complement lysis than other microorganisms. The lipooligosaccharide, I said it's part of the pathogenesis, uh, plus the sialic acid in the uh, cell wall of the microorganism interfere with the C3 complement deposition. That is why it is resistant to the complement. Also lipooligosaccharide and peptidoglycan of the cell wall can trigger cytokine release. Now, the outer membrane uh, of the microorganism uh, can result in endotoxemia and uh, because they contain endotoxin, the outer membrane vesicles, which are present around. I will show you a picture for it. So we said that the microorganism attached to the microvilli through the outer membrane of proteins and pili. This is for the gonococcus. We will study it with the UGS, as I said. And meningococcus enter in vesicles to the cells and migrate and go to the submucosa because they are capsulated microorganism. You can see the capsule around them while Neisseria gonorrhea are non-capsulated and Neisseria meningitis are capsulated. So they resist phagocytosis and resist complement destruction and go to the bloodstream and cause bacteremia and endotoxemia. And uh, once they are in the blood, of course, they can reach to the CNS and cause meningitis. These are the uh, blips that I have talked about. These vesicles, they contain endotoxin of the, they are containing lipopolysaccharide endotoxin. That is why, uh, that is why I said the LOS is part of the pathogenesis of the microorganism. Immunity group specific anticapsular protective. Absence of the antibodies make the individual susceptible. The carrier state and infection, if the person is carrier of these microorganisms, and I said carriers are present in 10% among people, and also infection with 
meningococci can result in antibody production, and these antibodies are protective. Deficiency in terminal complement, that is to say C5 up to C9, mainly C5, can increase the risk of infection. So that is why one of the important infections in individuals uh, who have uh, deficiency in complement is Neisseria infections, whether Neisseria gonorrhea or Neisseria meningitis. The most common age for infection with Neisseria meningitis is between six and 24 months. That is to say below two years of age. Remember, Neisseria meningitis meningitis 6 to 24 months of age. It could be at uh, adult also, but the main peak, I am saying. For example, Neisseria meningitis is among uh, very important uh, microorganism causing meningitis in pilgrimage, fil hajj. Many people are carriers, so uh, it can be transmitted from one person to other and cause meningitis. Capsular polysaccharide can lead to IgG2 response, polysaccharide. And IgG2 is relatively deficient in early childhood. Usually IgG2 response become mature enough at the age of three years. That is why children under 24 months, two years of age, are more susceptible to get uh, meningococcal infection. And the immune response, you know, the immune response, some of the immune response, again, is polysaccharide antigen, depends on T cells. Some others uh, uh, do not depend on T cells. So T independent response to capsular poly polysaccharide during this age group up to two years is poor. T independent without the help from T cells against the capsular polysaccharide is poor. Again, group B, which is prevalent in the Middle East, for example, we said uh, they have 13 serotypes, A, B, and C, etc. Group B is not immunogenic. It has poor stimulation to the immune system. So, factor that children usually not mature enough to uh, produce IgG2, and also a group B, Neisseria meningitis, is not immunogenic, and there will be poor T independent response against its capsule. You can look here to this figure, the relationship between the antibody production and uh, the Neisseria meningitis disease, that is to say meningitis. The child once born, the child has got antibodies from his mother, which is a transplacental antibody, which is usually of IgG class. So once it starts to decrease by the age of six months, it's almost zero, okay? Or very low, at least you can say. You can see that Neisseria meningitis infection will start to become higher and higher. The peak it will reach uh, to the, at the age of two years, 24 months. These are months. This is the 12 months. So by the age of two months, it reached to the peak. And then antibodies against Neisseria meningitis start to be formed by the individual and become higher and higher. And that is why the disease frequency will start to uh, decrease gradually until by the age of 20 years, these are in years, 
there will be a slight increase of the cases and they attribute this uh, a transient increase in the incidence of uh, meningitis caused by meningococci due to military service al khidma al askariya because it is communicable disease any gathering can lead to this or any gathering like universities for example Clinically, it can cause acute purulent meningitis. And we said that from the beginning, there are pus cells. A scattered skin petechiae. Petechiae, يعني, زي ما بتحكي, نزف تحت الجلد. نزف دموي تحت الجلد. It can lead to echemosis. هذا النزف البسيط will coalesce with each other and become echemosis. Or diffuse petechial rash, which is sign of what? Of DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. DIC, disseminated, يعني منتشر, intravascular coagulation. And it can indicate endotoxic shock also and meningococcemia. What is meningococcemia? the presence of the microorganism in the blood with their endotoxins, right? So once you see the rash or petechiae or ecchymosis, it is very dangerous sign. And I said this microorganism can kill the individual or the child within 24 hours. Diagnosis, a gram stain of the CSF, diagnostic. You take lumbar puncture, and then you do a gram stain, which can be done in half an hour, and you will get a result. You can see them a gram negative diplococci, as we have described them. You can culture them on a blood agar, on chocolate agar, because we say they are fastidious. You do culture of what? You do culture of CSF, of blood blood sample also you can culture it because the microorganism could be detected in the blood also you can take a sample from the skin lesion you may find the microorganism to know the species of the microorganism for a speciation you can do biochemical and immunological tests usually not done in hospitals these are the uh, coalesce petechiae Look at them. Kanema nezif damawi indicate intravascular coagulation and also endotoxin present in the blood together with the microorganisms, of course. Treatment, the microorganism uh, is usually sensitive to penicillin, so you can start penicillin treatment, penicillin G, for example. If resistant, well, you can use third generation cephalosporin like uh, cefetriaxone or cefotaxin. Prevention, you know, for each patient, there are contacts around the patient, his family, his brother, sisters, or in the school, friends, etc. So, uh, rifampicin or Ciprofloxacin, if uh, the patient is uh, uh, not a child, uh, you can use ciprofloxacin. Rifampicin usually used as a prophylaxis for close contact with a case, case of meningitis, of course. There is vaccine, which is called meningococcal conjugate quadrivalent vaccine meningococcal v4 what is v4 vaccine with four serotypes these serotypes are the a c y w135 why not b b we said not immunogenic so it is not included in the vaccine although nowadays uh, there are reports from China, uh, they were succeeded uh, to make it 
more immunogenic and added to a new vaccine. But the classical MCV4 does not contain the uh, B serotype. This vaccine can stimulate the T cell dependent immune response, right? Polysaccharide usually the capsule T independent, but this vaccine can stimulate T cell dependent immune response. Immune response usually T dependent or independent, very simple. يعني. قسم يحتاج T cell, قسم ما يحتاج T cell. الفاكسين هذا يحتاج T cell help to the B cell to produce the protective antibodies. This can be done by making the vaccine conjugated. يعني نربطة مع فاكسين آخر. مثلا ديفتيريا توكسويد. هذا الديفتيريا توكسويد يلعب دور الكارير. تخذت كورس إميونولوجي العام الماضي. ف Uh, Hapton carrier phenomena. Uh, this vaccine can be given from nine months and can be given again in a booster dose at the age 11 to 16 years. And we said this vaccine is very useful, can be given quite early or from nine months of age. And we said the, the peak of the incidence up to two years. A group B is non-immunogenic, we said, due to similarity to the sialic acid of the microorganism and the neural cells. That is why the body cannot recognize it well. They think it is part of the body because it's antigen similar to the antigen of a neural cell. We finish with Neisseria meningitis. Let us go to the second microbe, which is group B, Streptococci. Streptococcus agalacti. Streptococcus agalacti. Or some people pronounce it Streptococcus agalaxia or agalaxi. Uh, whatever you want to pronounce it, it's a group B. Streptococcus, you know, according to the Ransfield classification, Streptococci can be group A, can be group B, can be group C, etc. These are gram positive cocci present in short chains, sometimes even in diplococci, but not in similar morphology to Neisseria meningitis. Diplococci like chain, they are beta hemolytic, remember, group B is beta hemolytic on a blood agar and uh, they contain uh, an enzyme which is beta hemolysine can hemolyze blood they are capsulated microorganism remember so gram positive beta hemolytic capsular they have 10 antigenic types with sialic acid Type 3, type 1, 2, 3, etc. Type 3 is the most common one. So if I ask you, what is the most common type of a group B streptococci? You will say to me, type 3. They have also pili for attachment and surface protein. They are leading cause of meningitis and sepsis. In the first day of life, يعني بعد الولادة, لو أنا أسألك بعد الولادة the most important microorganism in causing meningitis is a group B streptococci streptococcus agalacti and also later a bit the first few days of life within the first three months from one to three months of age فإذا then two peaks في الأيام الأولى in the first days of life بعد الولادة وخلال شهر إلى ثلاثة أشهر فلو أنت سئلت أنه the most common microorganism causing meningitis in the first few days of life you will choose a group B streptococci or
or Streptococcus agalacti. These microorganisms are found in the lower GI and vagina of 10 to 40 percent of women. So the child gets the microorganism from his mother during delivery because it's a present within the GI and the present in the vagina of the mother in about 10 to 40 percent of the cases. This table is very important and we are going to make use of it. Uh, we have this reaction, basitracine, optokine sensitivity test, basitracine disc also, sensitivity test, optokine. Some people pronounce it as optogene and bile solubility. Look here, beta hemolytic, يعني those which can cause beta hemolytic, uh, which can cause beta hemolysis, that is to say, complete hemolysis of the RBC, group A and group B. So both group A and group B are beta hemolytic, also group C, F, and G. But today we are studying group B. Group B is beta hemolytic. Group A is also beta hemolytic. How we differentiate between them? By basitracine. Group A is basitracine sensitive, while group B is not sensitive, resistant to basitracine. So you can see positive, negative. Now, uh, Alpha hemolysis can be caused by streptococcus pneumoniae. And we will study streptococcus pneumoniae uh, during this lecture, inshallah. So beta hemolytic and alpha hemolytic. Alpha hemolytic, that is to say, partial hemolysis of the RBC. Uh, you will see a greenish color on the plate while beta hemolysis is a clear zone of hemolysis around the microorganism. How I differentiate between these groups and streptococcus pneumonia, uh, streptococcus pneumonia is optokine sensitive and bile soluble, bile solubility test positive. While this group A and group B, optokine resistant, and not bile soluble, right? Streptococcus viridans, which is present in the mouth, all of them are negative. The other two tests are more details. So we will leave them for the moment. The typical group B streptococcus we know that these microorganisms are very important in the newborn baby in the first few days of life. If you see a child during this age, in the first few days, who is not doing well, has got fever, lethargy, poor feeding, respiratory distress, you have to think about a group B streptococcus. And always I say to you, as with the other system, a clinical capsule is very important because you may be asked in a clinical scenario according to this clinical capsule. Usually localizing findings are not present. And the diagnosis of meningitis and the presence of the microorganism can be detected by investigations. You can isolate the microorganism from the blood or from the CSF. So there is no warning. There is no localizing signs or very lacking. The mortality rate is high from this type of infection, even if you use appropriate antibiotics. So one has to be very careful. You may lose the child in the first few days. Pathogenesis, capsule sialic acid, bind to the factor edge of the complement. You know, one of the factors of the complement factor edge. So C3 deposition on the bacteria will be affected, will be disrupted. 
and we said that capsulated microorganisms are usually resistant to the effect of the complement. The patient or the child may have a transplacental specific IgG, which is a protective from the mother. And a type of specific anticapsular, we said uh, 10 serotypes of the capsule. So type specific. Cool antibody is specific against a certain serotype. And we said the most common type is type 3, protective antibodies. Diagnosis, again, you do CSF gram staining, culture, and serotyping, Lansfield grouping. Shu Lansfield grouping, yani na'rufa group A, group B, group C, etc. Hada isma Lansfield grouping. Walau haliyan fi ahdath min Lansfield, but still a classical bacteriology. Treatment penicillin. This microorganism does not produce beta lactamase production. No beta lactamase enzyme, which can break penicillin. يعني ما عندهم beta lactamase production. Sometimes, to be sure, we are not sure whether this microorganism is streptococcus or not, or group B or not. Uh, uh, you can add aminoglycoside to the penicillin just for a short while. When the culture will be available, you stop the aminoglycoside. Aminoglycoside like uh, agentamycin, for example. In prevention, we said it comes from uh, the carrier mothers. So the carrier mothers uh, during week uh, 35 to 37 of a pregnancy, you can give them uh, a treatment. You can give intravenous penicillin uh, during labor, intrapartum. Intrapartum ma'anata uh, during labor, khilal al-wilada. Ta'allamu ala al-kalima. Intrapartum khilal al-wilada. You can give intravenous penicillin. Vaccine is also possible uh, during the pregnancy, especially in the third trimester. Third trimester, يعني ثلاث أشهر الأخيرة. The pregnancy تسعة أشهر. تقسم إلى first, و second, و third trimester. ثلاث أشهر ثلاث أشهر. So the vaccine can be given in the third trimester of a pregnancy, just to prevent the spread of this microorganism to the uh, newborn baby, and the vaccine will produce antibodies of IgG type, and the IgG will be transferred to the fetus, as you know, and the fetus will be protected after birth. The other microorganism, Haemophilus influenzae. Remember, we have started at 10, uh, 15 minutes, okay? So still we have a time. Haemophilus influenzae. These are tiny gram-negative cocoa bacilli. شو معنات cocoa bacilli? يعني هم في المورفولوجي بين الكوكس والباسلس. We call them cocoa bacilli. That is to say, very short bacilli. They require two factors to their growth. Factor X and factor V. And according to their requirement, we can classify Haemophilus and influenzae into different types. So uh, factor X is hematine, which comes from the blood. And also NAD factor, which is factor V, which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. N nicotinamide A adenine dinucleotide. So these microorganisms, Haemophilus and influenzae, they require uh, factor X and factor V. Uh, some microorganisms, they are able to produce factor V. For example, like uh, Staphylococcus aureus. So the colonies, so if we do this test, 
We put Staphylococcus aureus here. Okay, as X. This is not X factor. شكل ال ال inoculation X. They provided extra V factor to the blood agar. So the colonies of Haemophilus and Influenzae around the Staph aureus will be larger in size than the rest of the plate. This is called satellite phenomena. So remember this satellite phenomena. According to the capsule of the microorganism, we have six serotypes from A to F, capsular polysaccharide. The most important ones of these is Haemophilus influenzae type B, which we call it HIP, H-I-P. The capsule of this microorganism contain polyribose ribitol phosphate, RPP, PRP, sorry, PRP, polyribose ribitol phosphate, PRP. Also, these microorganisms have got outer membrane antigens, protein, high molecular weight number one and number two, lipopolysaccharide, LPS, lipopolysaccharide, lipooligosaccharide, LOS. These are also part of the pathogenesis of the microorganism. So remember, hemophilus and influenzae type B, capsulated microorganism, contain PRP in their capsule, also have these antigens, protein, LPS, and LOS. The other, which are not capsulated, these are usually present in the nasopharyngeal area. Persons are carrier, rarely can cause disease. But the most dangerous and the most uh, pathogenic one is Haemophilus influenzae type B. So this microorganism is going to cause meningitis. So you can see that these are gram negative, cocobacilli, pleomorphic, yani some of them are long bacilli, some of them are almost cocci like You can see them. Mukawarat, some of them filamentous form. This picture is a pleomorphic. Other microorganisms may be similar, for example, like Bordetella pertussis. Bordetella pertussis, yani jirthuma, allati tusabib whooping cough, as su'al al diki, or pertussis, you summa. Brucella also have the same morphology. So we cannot differentiate between them by gram stain. We can say only a gram negative cocobacilli. Haemophilus and influenzae, we said they have serotypes A to F. They require hematine and NAD, that is to say the X and V factor. They are capsulated, Haemophilus and influenzae, and they have also factor pili and high molecular weight of protein. They could be present as normal flora and they spread by respiratory droplets. They can cause meningitis, epiglottitis, arthritis, sepsis, otitis media, iltihab al udn al wusta, otitis media, iltihab al udn al wusta, very common in children. So meningitis, or epiglottitis, remember this. Pathogenesis is present in the nasopharyngeal area. Some people are carriers for it, 20 to 80 percent. Most of them are non-capsulated, and we call them NTHI, non-typable hemophilus influenzae. Shu non-typable, يعني ما عندهم كبسول. إحنا typing نعمل serotype للكبسول. وحكينا أنه عندنا six serotypes from A to F. So the carriers of <coughs> Haemophilus are usually uh, non-typable Haemophilus and Influenzae. Only capsulated microorganisms are invasive. 
children less than two years of age, again, are more susceptible to get meningitis because their antibody production is still limited. This microorganism can adhere by pili or adhesin attached to the epithelial cells. And the invasion of this microorganism, this is a very important point. They can go in between the cells. You can see in between the epithelial cells. They migrate through here, okay? And because they are capsulated microorganism, again, can resist phagocytosis. This is polymorphic nuclear cell, you can see it. They resist phagocytosis, therefore they go to the blood and cause meningitis. So again, these microorganisms attach to the epithelial cells by their pili and outer membrane of protein, and uh, they go uh, in between the cells to reach to the submucosa and then migrate to their blood. Immunity anticapsular, of course, which are bactericidal and protective. These antibody, the anticapsular, can kill the microorganism. Hib B, that is to say, Haemophilus and influenzae type B, can occur at the ages between 6 and 18 months, that is to say, under 2 years of age especially when the antibody production against the capsular antigen, which are polysaccharide antigens, uh, is absent or deficient. T-independent response to PRP is poor. Then a child in this age, and we're talking about polysaccharide PRP, so the immune response, which is T-independent, is poor. And will, uh, and will gradually become more and more better after the age of uh, 18 months or two years. That is why we have to conjugate, يعني نربط, نساعد, زي ما حكيت, Hapton Carrier Phenomena. نعمل conjugation, ويسمى conjugated vaccine. Conjugate PRP antigen to protein carrier. To elicit what? T response. يعني أنت تساعد ال immune response against this vaccine. لو تربط هذا الفاكسين مع بروتين وعادة نربطه مع فاكسين آخر. Meningitis. He may follow an influenza again can cause acute purulent bacterial meningitis. That is to say, with pus. So. Uh, the uh, CSF is not a clear. Usually, the meningitis, which is caused by Haemophilus and influenzae, preceded, يعني, يسبق, preceded by upper respiratory tract infection, like pharyngitis, التهاب البلعوم, otitis media, التهاب الأذن الوسطى, sinusitis, التهاب الجيوب الأنفية فالطفل من يصير عنده هاي الالتهابات من هاللوكال فوكس هيمافلس ان فلاونزي تايب بي could spread and reach to the blood and cause meningitis the patient will start to have vague malaise تعبان lethargy irritable with fever the mortality rate is significant 3 to 6 percent despite of treatment. One third of the survival, حتى اللي ينجو من هذا المرض, will have significant neurological sequelae. يصير عنده اضطرابات بالجهاز العصبي. مثلا ذكاء يقل. شوف طفل كان مثلا ذكي بالمدرسة يصبح مثلا أقل ذكاء. أو إذا طفل صغير يصبح أقل انتباها. One third of children who survive hemophilus and influenzae meningitis will have significant neurological sequelae. Either in a clinical capsule, <clears throat> hemophilus and influenzae can produce acute life-threatening 
infection of the central nervous system. That is to say meningitis can produce also epiglottitis, very important. And you will have more about this disease. Uh, and I hope that you have heard about it when you had your respiratory system. Uh, children mainly affected because we said they don't have a protective antibodies. The condition begin as fever, lethargy, before the uh, meningitis can be seen, and then progress to coma and death uh, in less than one day. Also aggressive. Um, rich country, which we call them affluent, affluent, يعني rich countries, uh, they can use uh, vaccine against hemophilus and influenza. Uh, hemophilus and influenza also can produce respiratory tract infection and uh, also the non-typable uh, are present uh, in carriers and rarely can cause also infection. So our uh, concern today with hemophilus and influenza type B in causing meningitis. Diagnosis to gram stain CSF, culture also we can do on uh, these are fastidious microorganisms. So you have to grow them on a blood agar, for example. And there is a rapid diagnostic kit for hemophilus and influenza. Lianna unta, hakeena anna wadha al-mara sariya. Mumkin yattawar khilal 24 saa, and the child will die. So there is rapid diagnostic test, which depends on the serology, detection of the antigen, of the capsular antigen, okay? So in the CSF, you can take the CSF and see whether the hemophilus and influenza type B antigen is a present or not, which will give you the diagnosis in less than one hour or even less. Treatment third generation cephalosporin empirically. يعني بناء على حسن التوقع empirically. Uh, now, if the susceptibility is if the susceptibility is uh, uh, okay, so if the susceptibility test is available, you, you can use ampicillin. However, 5% to 50% of the strains are resistant to ampicillin because of beta-lactamase production. بس باقي لي سلايد واحد انا نعم هذا السلايد الاخير اوكي بريفنشن وي يوز كونجوجيتد هيمافلوس اند انفلونزي فاكسين وي سيد كونجوجيتد لانه حكينا انه تشايلد ما عنده الاميون ريسبونس الابروبريت سو اي شود بي كونجوجيتد uh, diphtherial toxoid, or you can use outer membrane of protein of Nigeria meningitis, and it can be given from two months of age. Uh, it can give very good protection, 99% can reduce the incidence and reduction in the colonization of nasopharyngeal area. And this conjugated vaccine can stimulate T cell dependent response. Uh, Rifampicin can be given for the uh, uh, for the contact of the patient. Remember, rifampicin can be used for a prophylaxis. If you get a question, uh, what is the uh, a prophylactic antibiotic that you give it? to contact to the patient and immunized will be rifampicin. Next lecture, inshallah, we will continue from streptococcus pneumonia. Any question? Any comment? Uh, uh, doctor? Naam. 
حكينا بالهيموفلس انفلونزا انه بيكون في ناس هيموفلس انفلونزي انفلونزي اوكي انفلونزا از ذا ديزيز انفلونزي از ذا مايكرو اورجانيزم اوكي دكتور حكينا انه في ناس بتكون كاريرز لانكابسوليتد صحيح؟ اه اه دكتور طيب هذول بيكون في عندهم انتي بوديز او اميونيتي تجاه اذا يعني صار اه عندهم انتي بوديز انتي بودي ضد النون كابسوليتد مايكروبس اها بس اذا صار سو ذير فور ذي ويل نوت هاف ذا دينجر اوف اي سم تايم ذا بيرسون كوايت اونستلي كان بي كارير اوف هيموفلس ان فلاونزي تايب بي دي كابسوليتد بس اف ذي هاف ذي كابسول ذي ار بروتكتد بس اند اف ذا بيرسون هاز بين فاكسينيتد اولسو It will develop a protective antibody, and even if uh, hemophilus and influenza type B, the capsulated one, uh, come to that patient, comes to that patient, it will be protected against it also. يعني هذه النون تايبابل ممكن تعمل لك بعض الأمراض مثلاً like meningitis. Sorry, like sinusitis, التهاب الجيوب الأنفية. Sometimes ear infection, mild ear infection, but usually are non-pathogenic. No. Thank you. واضح. آه واضح دكتور شكرا. Okay, good question. Excellent. مين عنده سؤال آخر? Please do ask. We have still two or three minutes. If not. I will stop the lecture up to here and hope to see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And please uh, uh, organize the lecture to be started at 10 o'clock. Assalamu alaikum.